Hi and welcome to Zoom TV, the show we explore everything that flies, drives and floats and invite you along for the experience. Well today we're going to demonstrate how a car can look great during the day but amazing at night and there's no better car to prove that with than the Toyota 86. And that's the great thing about the 86, day or night it makes an impression. We also introduce you to the new generation Hyundai iX35. The new iX35 Series 2 Special Edition is the result of fine tuning and perfecting. Dan Paris gets to jump in the new Holden Volt. Personally, I think the Volt is one of the most technologically absorbing cars I've ever sat in. And I'll introduce you to this week's Asanda celebrity hitchhiker, George Havidas from Pack to the Rafters. Uh, best car on the roads. Do you know what? Okay, he's he's on the street. Range Rover Defender. Oh, really? New so, ones. Welcome to Zoom TV at night time. Today I'm taking a look at the number one small SUV on Australian roads right now. Chances are if you're in the market for a cost-effective all-rounder, this particular vehicle is high on your list. Meet the all-new Hyundai iX35 Series 2 SE. Yes, I know, it's a long title for a car we're all familiar with, but what does it actually mean? Well, Hyundai have been tinkering away with the iX35 in response to some criticism over the previous models and have spent a long time figuring out ways to solve the problems and to make this one their best ever. For example, one of the main criticisms with the older iX35 models was that the ride was too sloppy and the steering was unresponsive. Well, Hyundai have listened and with the new iX35, they researched more than 12 front suspensions and 24 rear suspensions before deciding on the combination they've got in the new iX35, which they say is perfect for Australian road conditions. Hyundai have also given the iX35 a brand new electric steering processor so handling is more responsive and, of course, improved. On top of that, the special edition comes with Hyundai's new 2.0-litre GDI four-cylinder petrol engine, which is far more responsive and more economical. You're going to love it. What makes these petrol engines so different is they now feature direct fuel injection, which means greater fuel efficiency and more torque for low-end grunt in both the six-speed auto two-wheel drive or the all-wheel drive models. 18-inch alloy wheels, redesigned headlamps and brand new roof rails are all part of the latest iX35 look and I've got to say, it looks pretty good. On the inside of the special edition, Hyundai have tweaked a few things here and there just to improve the overall presentation. Things like leather wrapped steering wheel with mounted controls, they've hidden the reversing camera in the reversing mirror, and they've even added mood lighting to the cup holders just to improve the whole experience the iX35 offers you as a driver. And I've got to say, I'm a fan. Bluetooth phone and audio streaming is standard these days in all iX35s, along with USB input, steering wheel audio controls, iPod compatibility and auxiliary input jack. Optional sat-nav is available in most models. If it's the latest technology you're after, you're going to find it right here. Now, there's a few reasons why the iX35 is just so popular. One, well they're great to drive. Two, they give you a great driving position with little to no blind spots. But three is they make a great family car because they're just so versatile. Don't believe me? Well, come on, let's take a look. The rear seats on the new iX35 Special Edition come in a 60-40 split with several different levels of recline. When the rear seats are folded down, you'll have more than enough room for the shopping, a few bikes, moving furniture, school gear, camping gear, well, you know what I'm trying to say, pretty much whatever you want to carry. You know, all in all, Hyundai have produced a very reliable and very popular SUV with the special edition iX35, and that can be put down to one thing. They actually listen to the feedback provided by their customers. Kind of makes sense. The new iX35 Series 2 Special Edition is the result of fine tuning and perfecting. 
my bet is we'll be seeing a lot more of these lined up next to us in traffic. If you want to be in one, instead of looking at one, get into John Hughes. Go to johnhughes.com.au or follow the links from Zoom TV. Do you want to get more out of your diesel? Well, let the team at United Fuel Injection help you. They're the experts in diesel fuel injection, turbocharging and vehicle performance technologies. Make an appointment today and get more talk out of your diesel at unitedfuel.com.au. Coming up after the break, I jump in the brand new Toyota 86 thanks to City Toyota. That's next on Zoom TV. There's nothing more appealing than a classic car. They have a certain ambience about them, but you wouldn't really drive one every day. And who wants a car they can't drive every day? Now, Toyota understand this, which is why they reinvented the FJ Cruiser. And critics would say they did it quite successfully, mainly because they held on to the nostalgia of the original, but added the practicality and the safety features of the 21st century. Well, Toyota have given life to another much-loved model of the past. Well, it's actually fairer to say they have combined the best of three much-loved Toyota sports cars. Their 1965 Sports 800, their 1967 2000 GT and their 1983 AE86 to deliver the brand new 2012 86 Coupe. So the question is, has Toyota done a good job? Well, looking at it from here, I'd have to say, yes, they have. I mean, it's a sexy looking car. I love the curves and the lines and the contour of the car from the back to the front, from the diffuser in the back of the car to the sporty looking grooves in the front bonnet that extend all the way through the roof. They tell me this car is aerodynamic. They also tell me this is an athletic machine. Toyota's 86 shares DNA with some of the most exciting track-proven sports cars ever made. It draws on Toyota's heritage of rear-wheel drive front-engine sports cars which date back as far as 1965. The 86 has been tested on different racetracks at key stages of its development. Toyota have also reached out and involved some of the world's best professional drivers from its inception, all of whom have collaborated with the development and evolution of the 86. And don't for one second think that Toyota have cut any corners. The 86 was driven and tested on some of the world's toughest tracks, such as Fuji and Chebet Speedways in Japan and Nürburgring in Germany. Another great design feature of the 86 is best explained sitting in it. I mean, the dash, tick that box. The features, tick that box. The layout and the design of the interior, tick, tick. This is a great place to sit, let alone drive from. A very important design feature most drivers are going to love, and I should have mentioned earlier, is the Toyota 86 is actually a rear wheel drive. That's right, it's a rear wheel drive, so drivers, you're going to enjoy driving it. Plus, the grooves in the front bonnet help to let you know the placement of the front wheels. You know, I may have only had the chance to review just a handful of cars so far on this program, but I reckon the producers here have begun to work me out. And I'm not sure if it's my tree-hugging, nature-loving past, but when they rang to see if I'd be interested in road testing an exciting new electric car, well, I couldn't resist, could I? They know me well. Although I must confess, in my excitement to discover everything I could about this little gem, I made contact with Melville Holden and asked to borrow a car for a day. Now, they were only too happy, but in conversation, I was immediately corrected when referring to it as a hybrid. This is no hybrid. Oh no, this car is so much more. So what exactly is it? Well, it's electric. It's a luxury electric powered sedan, but it's also a vehicle that's pushing the boundaries of anything that we've seen before. Up until now, say electric vehicle, and no doubt you think small, average looking hatchback with a range of about, say, 60 k's. But imagine only hitting the petrol station, say, once a month, because this car has the technology to travel much further. How does 600 k sound to you? Under the bonnet is a full electric drivetrain like any normal electric vehicle. 
but now they've included a small 1.4 litre petrol motor, which kicks in whenever the battery needs a charge. It doesn't power the wheels, just the lithium ion battery. Having said that, if the battery does run flat, just pop in your closest service station, fill up the petrol motor and you drive it like a standard car. That's actually a first for electric vehicles. By the way, guess how much it costs to charge the battery? $2.50. And that gives you the first 80 kilometres of driving on electricity only, without engaging the petrol engine. But that's just the motor. Let's have a chat to Melville Holden's new car sales consultant, Dave Sloss, because I'm sure there's so many more surprises here. Dave, this is a, it's a really good looking car, isn't it? I mean, you must be getting some comments, eh? We're getting a lot of feedback from customers. They are over the moon with it. It's just so full of technology and it's so different. They just can't get enough. Well, that's it. It's technology, isn't it? It's technology on wheels. I mean, what are your favourite features? My favourite feature, personally, is the fact that you can start up the vehicle without having to be in the vehicle. You can even be inside your house if you've got a good enough range. And you can start the car up to climatise the entire cabin to how you last had it. So you could be, say, five minutes from getting in your car on a 40 degree day here in Perth, aircon's going, you get into a really nicely chilled area. That's exactly right. That's very smart. It is. It's cool. <laughs> the dash itself is... It's a little overwhelming, actually. I mean, for starters, there's, there's two LCD screens. I mean, it's, it's a car of the future. It's technology, isn't it? Definitely. This will lead the way. What's this button here doing? That one actually stops if you're getting too close to a vehicle. It will alert you and actually get you to slow down. You're kidding. It does the dirty work. Yeah. What's the one underneath it? That one is if you actually veer over a lane without indicating. It, uh, again, alerts you and lets you know that you're starting to drift. Good for you while you're texting, you know, if you're texting while you drive. <laughs> of course, we don't do that here. You can donate that sort of stuff, not at all. Personally, I think the Bolt is one of the most technologically absorbing cars I've ever sat in. For instance, when I brake, the Bolt is able to regenerate that energy and use it to charge the batteries. And check this out. This little animated green ball here reflects how efficiently I'm driving the car. Accelerate too hard and the ball leaps to the top and turns slightly yellow. But then brake a little putting energy back into the motor and the ball stays green. Which is just the kind of thing you'd expect when you're sitting in what looks like the world's most luxurious game console. But as is tradition, I've saved one of the best features for last. That is the way it drives. The Volt's unique electric propulsion system means instant torque and it turns out it's pretty awesome handling too. Electric cars that are fun. Who'd have thought? There's only one spec offered in Australia. It's the model with all the fruit. So if you'd like to give it a whirl, pop into Melville Holden or jump on their site, it's melvilleholden.com.au or better yet, follow the links from Zoom TV. Join me later in the show as we dig deeper and look closer at the brand new Toyota 86 Coupe. And if you can't wait, log on to citytoyota.net.au for more details. The Toyota 86 comes in two models, the GT and the slightly more fancy GTS. Both models give you the choice of six-speed manual and silky smooth six-speed automatic. Today, you're on board the automatic GTS. The 86 Coupe is powered by a two-litre, four-cylinder, horizontally opposed Boxster engine, which delivers 147 kilowatts of power. What does that mean? Well, better weight to power ratio, but mainly better performance, economy, and much improved power. Now, Wayne, I absolutely love the new 86, and Toyota's done a great job launching it. I heard, I heard that they have 30,000 Facebook likes before it was even released. Yeah, that's right, Aaron. The Toyota's really embraced the social media, and with the FJ Cruiser launch, there was over 4,000 followers on social media. With the 86, they've had over 30,000 followers. Which is fantastic. That's a huge following. Why do you think that is? I think Australia's been starved of that real sports car, so we've had the Celica and the MR2, been out of circulation for a little while, and it's been in the pipeline and it's contracted a lot of attention, and it's come together as a great package. I really love the layout of the 86 Coupe. It's got everything you need to keep you comfy. On the steering wheel, you get mounted paddle shifters in the auto, and you might notice there's nothing on there, no switches, nothing stopping you from driving it. That's because in the 86, the steering wheel is to drive the car. Nothing more, nothing less. 
The 86 Coupe has a wide range of advanced safety features. It's built on an extremely rigid frame featuring high grade tensile steel. It comes with vehicle stability control, traction control, an advanced braking package with anti-skid braking system, electronic brake force distribution, brake assist and seven airbags. At night, the 86 comes to life. Its efficient, high-intensity discharge self-leveling headlights bring its front-on profile alive. Approaching vehicles could be forgiven for thinking they were being stalked by a dragon, not a sleek coupe. And that's the great thing about the 86. Day or night, it makes an impression. Now, before some of you ride in, just hear me out for a second. You see, Toyota aren't suggesting we become race car drivers or hoons. What they are suggesting is that we take control of what we drive and enjoy it. And with the 86 Coupe, that's exactly what Toyota have done. They've given us back our right to drive and not be driven. Now, if you don't follow me, drop into City Toyota, jump onto citytoyota.net.au or follow the links from Zoom TV and you'll understand exactly what I'm saying. After the break, we catch up with this week's Sander celebrity hitchhiker, George Havidas from Pack to the Rafters. That's next on Zoom TV. Welcome back to Zoom TV. Now I'm joined by what I believe to be one of the most popular cast members of the Rafters that unfortunately just finished, George Havardis. How are you, George? Good, mate. How are you? Mate, thanks for coming on. You've grown a lot of hair since I've seen you last. Yeah, it doesn't um, take long, mate. I'm very envious. Now, mate, you've um, a very popular role on Rafters. It would be fair to say that you were one of the most popular cast members without taking anything away from the whole team. How do you find life after Rafters? Uh, mate, look, to be honest, uh, it was... Obviously, there were some sad times, you know, leaving a full-time job as an actor, and then we all became uh, rather close. It was six years of work, so it was great. Um, but to be honest, coming out, a bit of a relief too. Um, it was time for a change, um, time for new challenges, new things. Yeah. But uh, life after Raft is exciting. That's yeah. all I can say about it. It's good. Why do you think they, they stopped it? It was rating well? well it, wasn't, it, wasn't, it wasn't seven as they. It was um, more or less the actors. Yeah. Um, we had all thought, pretty much they came to us and said, well, would you come back? And we and pretty much we all said, we'd come back if you finish your series off. Oh, wow. If we finish on a great uh, great episode, people were happy about it. And, and we'll go down as being a high rating series. Yeah. Rather than a series that had a slow death. Yep. And to put it in perspective, when we debuted, I think we went from um, 1.8 or 2 million, we went up on the second episode, 2.1. When we were, our, and our average over the, the, the course of five years is like 1.8. Mm. In the sixth series, the last series, the average was 1.8. So we carried that whole strong, and that's bigger than X Factor. Yeah, no, that's huge. I mean, 1.8 huge. Yeah, massive. So it was an absolute privilege and an honour. It's, it's launched my career, it's launched everyone else's career. I see, I'm after a discount. Oh. And don't think I've come running straight to you. Emma's already tried some sparky friend of hers. But... Going back before Rafters, what were you doing as an actor before that? I mean, just... I was a builder. And just what made you? I was you a builder, and I, I did acting back when I was a teenager, and always had a passion for. Always loved it. Watched, loved watching the Oscars, and then I went and did construction. Went to TAFE, became a builder. I, was, I think I was watching the Oscars 2003 or 2004, and I just said. I'm not one for regrets, bugger, I'm going to give it a go. And I'm going to study acting. Wow. And went into it, you know, wholeheartedly went to a school called Screenwise, ended up meeting the casting agent, Faye, who happened to be casting a new show called Pack the Rafters. Wow. And that's how it happened. Wow, there you go. Timing. The rest the rest is a dream. Someone else's dream as well, if they, um, if they wanted to have the career. I mean, it's only been a short career so far. Yeah, exactly. But you've achieved a lot. An amazing... Well, I like to, yeah, and look, I'm not... Um, blind to, to acting. I understand that it was what happened to me was very lucky. It doesn't happen. It very rarely does. And um, But, you know, lucky for me it did, and now I'm in a position where I can do something better. Um, and I, I, I kind of, I, I don't want to, um, you know, it might be two, three years before I get another gig. As long as it's a good one, I'm happy. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Yeah. Well, here's the next bit of my gig. 
Santa Fast Five, what is the car that you first ever drove, owned? Yeah, Datsun Corona. There you go. Well, which... Uh... The 60, 64 model brought off my grandmother for 50 bucks. <laughs> and I had to carry 120 litres of water in the boot <laughs> because the radiator had a hole in it. What is your opinion of the worst car on the roads today? Mate, my dad's driving a Tarago at the moment. Tarago getaway. <laughs> And that is the worst car. Is it the dual colour? Has he got the dual colour? No, he's got it all maroon. Oof. Love in it. In fact, I learned how to drive in that car. And what uh, is your opinion of the best car on the roads? Uh, best car on the roads? Do you know what? OK, he's, he's on the truth. Range Rover Defender. Oh, really? New See. ones. I'm driving a Prado at the moment. You're getting clucky, aren't you? Nah. <laughs> the Defenders, mate, they're like built like tanks. Uh, and what is the car that you currently drive now? Uh, Prado. There you go. Yeah, the Prado. The man. Black. Is. What's your biggest fear? Failing. Wow. Anything. Wow. I almost would have picked that with you. Yeah, because good hair. Bring it back to the <laughs> hair. Well, mate, you're not going to fail. You're going to do great. You came on Zoom. I really appreciate you taking Jeez, the mate. time out. So that's it, people. We're done. Thank you very much to this week's Asanda Celebrity Hitchhiker, Mr George Havitas, and thank you very much for watching. Now, if you want to know anything more about the show, go to our website, zoomtv.com.au. And while you're there, download our free iPhone app, made free thanks to Asanda. It'll tell you when the show's on. It'll even tell you when your rego's due. Now, as you can see, all of the Christmas decorations are out, which means one thing, our blooper show is coming. So I look forward to that. And until then, make sure whatever you do that zooms, you do it safe. And that's a wrap.